In Classic WoW, making gold was such a big part of the game. Many things required you to acquire a lot of gold just to get some of the basics. For example, getting your first mount, your first 60% speed mount, required 100 gold. If you were at like a level 60, that would probably take you about 4 to 5 hours of farming gold. <laughs> and that's just, that's the level 40 mount. That's not the level 60 100% speed mount, which required 1000 gold. So that should give you some perspective as to how big a deal gold was in Vanilla WoW. You needed gold to do anything, and being a raider required a really high amount of gold just to buy the potions you needed to raid. In addition, there were tons of buy and equip items that required really high prices to buy. So no matter what you were doing, you required a lot of gold to play Vanilla WoW. However, in Modern WoW, gold farming isn't that much of a thing. In Modern WoW, gold is really something quite secondary. It's not a key part of the game anymore. With things such as WoW tokens and, you know, buying and equip items being less and less important, it really isn't that much of a mechanic of the game. So when something is this time consuming and hard to acquire, it is natural that people will try and take some shortcuts. And, and this gave rise to the industry of real money trade. And in World of Warcraft, selling gold was such a huge business. Many companies, many big companies started brokering gold and they connected gold farmers in China to customers in the West. And they made a ton of money from this. Websites like IGE and so on were basically the leaders in this industry. And to begin with, it was somewhat of an innocent business. You see, obviously against Blizzard's terms of service, these guys were selling and farming gold. And obviously you're not allowed to do that according to the TOS. But back in the day, they were doing it quite innocently. They were basically just farming enemies and just acquiring gold the same way any other player would acquire gold through killing the same enemy over and over and basically trying to get the loot from it. They were farming gold, but it was their job. And many people in China did this. But these were the early days. These were some of the more innocent days of gold farming in World of Warcraft. But it turned pretty nefarious once these gold selling websites discovered that you could actually acquire way more gold if you started hacking people's real World of Warcraft accounts. This started the second wave. This was the next big thing on how to acquire gold in WoW. And basically, it was hacking people's accounts, and then you basically sell all of their items. You'd sell all of their items or disenchant them, and you'd get things like Nexus crystals and so on. And one epic item would disenchant for about 40 gold, a Nexus Crystal was about 40 gold. So they would log into your account, they would disenchant all your items, and then send the Nexus Crystals to one of their proxies. And that would be a ton of gold. If you think about how much gold a character, like an epic, like a character wearing epic items, that character could probably be disenchanted for about 300 gold, which is like the real money world equivalent of that is way more than an average wage in China. So to put that into perspective, all they have to do is just get into an account, disenchant your items, and they've made a day's wage. That's one account. So this was a way more efficient way of farming gold. Obviously, it's like the biggest scumbag thing to do, but this is what they did. And this even happened to me. Like when I was playing Vanilla WoW in 2006, I remember one day I logged into my Rogue and I saw in like the character select screen that my character was naked. Like why is not why is my character not wearing any gear? I didn't understand. I thought that was like a glitch. So I was like, okay, I'll log in. I logged in. I saw Orgrimmar. I saw my character. I wasn't wearing anything. I was like, uh, did I take my gear off? I open my bag, and my gear isn't there. Not only that, but I don't have any gold. And I was standing right next to a mailbox. And it was like, yeah, I've been hacked. <laughs> At the time, I didn't even know that was a thing. And I only discovered that's actually how they did it when it happened to me. And that was pretty traumatic. Like, I mean, I had some molten core items and, you know, I had some epic items. But damn, when I was like a little kid, that meant everything to me. But fortunately, I contacted Blizzard and I got my stuff back. Everything half a day to get my stuff back from Blizzard. But... That was pretty scary. Another unscrupulous way of them making gold was by using bots. You know, it was quite expensive to hire someone to farm gold for you for 12 hours 
I mean, that requires quite a lot of money to give out to people. And they discovered a better way of doing that was by using bots. So things like Glider and other bots like that, they became part of the market. And they were quite primitive bots, but back in the day, they did their job. And most of these guys were hunters. Like if you go to Deadwind Pass or any other area in the game where there's not much quests going on, you will see invariably a lot of bots farming gold. Mostly hunters. I think hunters are probably the best class for botting. Yeah, I mean if you go to Deadwind Pass you'll see like 10 hunters and you'll know what's up. You'll know these guys are either real life farmers that are working for IGE or something like that. But obviously the most nefarious way of acquiring this gold is the account hacking. And the way they did it was quite, it was just ugly. It wasn't like really complicated. Like when you think of hackers and you know, it's it's like an intellectual thing. It's like you imagine like some guy in his basement with like thick glasses and he's got like 10 monitors and like <laughs> you see like the green and black text from the matrix on the screens. It's like, it's not like that. It was so simple. What they did is they owned these WoW fan sites and they required you to log in. So you had to create your username and password. A fair percentage of people used the same username and password they did for the WoW account as they did on the fan site. So they had access to your username and password that you used for the fan site. So they had like a big list of these username and passwords. They would just enter into the WoW client and, you know, eventually they'd log in. Eventually they'd find someone with the matching username and password and they could just log into your account like that. So it's not that complicated. What they did to hack these accounts, it really wasn't that sophisticated. <laughs> it wasn't like, it wasn't that sophisticated. It wasn't like the movies where there's some nerd typing on this keyboard like a million miles per hour. It's not like that. It was just, it's just ugly. And the way they advertised their gold was pretty, was pretty interesting. Like, I mean, in Classic WoW, these gold farmers, these gold selling websites, but they would advertise themselves in some of the most invasive and really uh, almost imaginative ways. Like, I remember I was in Orgrimmar and I saw these, like, they were hacking. Like, uh, there was, like, a group of, like, 20 orc females. Their bodies were, like, flying in midair but their bodies were like making the shape of a website. So it was like IGE.com and, but it was like made out of orc female bodies. And <laughs> obviously that grabbed people's attention. I mean, people definitely saw that as an advertisement. I was like, oh yeah, IGE.com. They type that in and says, oh, I can buy gold. I mean, that's pretty creative and it's pretty insane that they could actually do that. Some of the more common ways of advertising gold is just like yelling in trade channel or something like that, or just sending or just sending spam mail. It's like you'd open your mailbox and you say, do you want to buy 1000 gold for $32? Visit this website. It was stuff like that. And in private servers, this is like a huge deal. In WoW private servers, I mean, these gold farming and gold selling websites are in full effect and probably bigger than ever. And this isn't even Blizzard official realms. This is just, this is just private servers. In private servers, I mean, there was a stage where you'd log into your character and every five seconds you'd get a whisper from some guy advertising a gold selling website. It was really that bad. Or you open your mailbox and there's 10 mails advertising gold. So it's really, out of control on the private servers. So much so that I believe back in the day, I think Nostalrius got DDoSed by these Chinese gold farmers um, because they kept banning their accounts and their server was basically held at ransom. It's pretty wild. Like, gold selling is serious business. Like, if you infringe on their industry, they'll come at you. They'll start DDoSing your server. So, I mean, these gold sellers are pretty, they can be pretty intimidating. You know, these gold farmers also had reign on, they basically had these mafias. So, like, in Vanilla WoW, there was something called Devil Soul Ever. And Devil Soul Ever was required to make pre-raid best and slot items, specifically for rogues, but also for hunters and, you know, stuff like that. And these things were very lucrative to farm. And in Angora Crater, these Chinese gold farmers basically took over Angora Crater and they basically made it impossible to kill your own Devil Soul. They had full control over the Devil Soul ever. So like, let's say you wanted to farm some of yourself. Well, they had like 20 people with them 
and if you tried to take their devil sword i mean they would just kill you instantly and i think they had both horde and alliance working together they had their own little like mafia going on and i mean people got pretty mad at that now although that is pretty cool we have to remember the type of people we're dealing with these are the type of people that will happily log into your account and disenchant all your items that you worked really hard to get and basically just do that to make a quick buck they'll happily do that so although these people are doing some pretty interesting things like their bodies make the shape of a website or they're doing like some devil saw farming these aren't good people <laughs> these are not good people and you should definitely shouldn't be supporting these guys because i mean what sense does it make that they hack your accounts and then you go to them and buy the gold back i mean that's just you getting bent over and i think the less support these guys have the less likely they are to do that if it wasn't making money they wouldn't do it although it is quite tempting to buy gold in vanilla and when classic wow comes out i mean this might be a big factor as well obviously now Today, we have more sophisticated ways of banning gold farmers and detecting bots and stuff like that. I think it will come back. Like, when Classic Well comes back, I think gold farming will be, will be a thing again. And when that happens, it will be quite tempting to buy some gold. It will, be, it, will be, it will be quite tempting to buy gold from one of these brokerage websites. I don't think you should go for it. I think you should resist the temptation to buy gold. Just try and farm some gold yourself. I mean, it does take some time, but... At least you're not supporting the guys that are hacking your account and selling the items. You don't want to give these guys any money. These are not someone you want to support. These are not the guys that you want to give your hard-earned real-world money to. I mean, even if they weren't doing their account hacking, they're still doing things like creating bots that farm gold and setting up mafias to, like, <laughs> have a monopoly on the devil soul ever. The way they make gold is not just simply farming the same mob over and over. They do things quite unscrupulously. So I definitely recommend not buying gold when Classic Well comes out. And who knows? I mean, it might not even be a thing. I mean, Blizzard's, like cheat detection might be so high and advanced right now that it would be impossible like obviously these private servers where the gold farming situation is really out of control obviously they don't have the resources that blizzard has in terms of detecting cheats and spam i mean who knows but this was just like a big part of classic or vanilla wow that i don't think people have really mentioned on youtube and it really was a big part of the game and over time selling gold became less and less of a business in burning crusade it was a similar deal but i think wrath of the lich king it started taking a downturn as gold farming was less and less a big deal well guys if you like this video please like down below and subscribe to the channel for more this is volty signing out